Welcome to the Path Breaking Podcast. Uh, I'm excited to have you here. I know that we talk all the time. We're always sharing ideas and and I see you around at events all the time. Um, but, uh, you know, it's great to have you here because I'm really interested in your work and I'm really interested in how you got to the point where you are today. Uh, to me, you're a world famous photographer. And you've been a person that has been archiving history, which I feel is like super important, especially as breaking continues to elevate and hip hop, I would say, continues to elevate into new levels where now it's all around the world. Everybody does it. And I talk about this all the time that it's very hard to go to a place where hip hop doesn't exist. Right, right. So how did you get into hip hop? Like, what was your beginning? How did you get involved with it? I guess it was the B-Boys that got me in. Um, I was a fan watching uh, illegally downloaded footages back in the days. Mm -hmm. I guess early 2000s, um, I saw Korean B-Boys, you know, uh, flying the flag on the stage of, um, I think it was Battle of the Year. Um, that got me in. So I was a fan for like five, six years, and I was studying photography at the time and for my final thesis I wanted to shoot something that I'm really into because on my third year I did a project on Times Square so I was there all the time mm -hmm. I was shooting photographers at Times Square because it was uh, the digital age when the digital cameras were coming up so I was doing that for a year and then ever since that one year of doing that yeah. project i never went back i avoided that area as much as possible hmm. because you know it wasn't something i enjoyed yeah. at the end of the day so um i wanted to pick something that i really love that i'm gonna really enjoy while i'm shooting and i've been talking about you know shooting b-boys with my colleagues mm -hmm. and you know my professor and my friends and they were always saying like when are you gonna shoot it you always say you're gonna shoot it when yeah. so for my final thesis i just went out to korea and then just reached out to people. I didn't know anyone. I just oh, wow. knew um, B boy physics and yeah. Hong Ten. I didn't even okay. I didn't even know any other B boys. So yeah, just so Hong Ten and physics. Wow, that's pretty cool though. I mean, so so in other words, you saw you saw breaking, and that's that was your way into hip hop through breaking. Which yeah, is pretty I didn't even like connect the dots. Yeah. I listened to hip hop music, you know, in the nineties, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. 90s big MTV era. Right. But I didn't associate breaking with hip hop, with hip -hop oh, wow. at the time. Okay. That's, That's pretty why cool. I yeah. was I was going to school in New York and I was placed in I was positioned in New York, mm -hmm. but I didn't even know hip hop started what? in New York. So before my um final year at school started, um when the when the summer break started, I just went out to Korea thinking Korean B-boys is the yeah. shit, you know, yeah. but to find out it all started in New, in New York. York. Yeah, in the Bronx, right? That's, yeah, that's Boogie so, Down Bronx. That's so cool. And so I remember that era of uh, the videos, you know, like I remember back in the days, I think it was like early 2000s where a 30 second clip was like a big deal, right? On on YouTube, I think at the time it was YouTube and like other channels. YouTube that were, wasn't around. I think it, it wasn't was around like yet. Netscape yeah. or I forget the names, yeah. but we would um share footages that we had. Like, did you watch like little this? clips, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I got this. You know, yeah. you want to see. And there wasn't that many clips out there, so it was like very short. Uh, and you couldn't never and watch the quality a full battle. wasn't good. Yeah, very short. But uh, and I was just talking about that the other day because once you started being able to see full battles, and you got to see uh more styles, you got to see more people from all around the world because before that time you really didn't know if it was all around the world. Like I thought, I'm from Mexico, right? So I thought when I came to the States that there's no breaking in Mexico, right? But there was, and there always had been. It's just, you didn't see it because we didn't have any any form of, of being able to watch it. Yeah, those social media back in the yeah. days, if you weren't really interested in it, yeah. um, you weren't going to get it. You weren't going to get it. And so you got into... Uh, in, into breaking specifically it seems like you follow a lot of b-boys and b-girls from when they were young and you know growing up now some of them are like world champions right yeah. so uh, where did you get your fascination and in your in your passion for photography like did it, was it something that you always had in you like when you were a kid did you have a camera and were you always taking pictures of people or, how, or where did it come from 
Uh, not at all. Actually, um, I love been take. You know, I love the uh, photos being taken of me. Hmm. Like that's what I like. So I, I like being in front of a camera. We would go out and have people like take photos of us. You know, hmm. our friends and family, and that's what I was into. And when I was like twenty twenty one, um, my sister recommended me to take a class at Nova. She was like, "Hey, I was going through a rebellious years mm -hmm. um, after high school." Okay. You know? Yeah. And um, she was like, "You know, I think you like photography. Just try it out." Hmm. So. I went to Nova, took uh, black and white photography one on one, and that was the beginning that's when you, of it all. Wow. Okay. So yeah, you basically shout out to Sarah Raymond and Paige Carl at um, Nova. They're awesome. Awesome. They're still so they, there. Are they your teachers? Yeah, yeah. They they really influenced influenced me to um, go to New York. They're like, you got, you should not stop here. You wow. should. Um, Try to pursue it, and yeah. then and they're still there now. They're still there. I okay. Should, uh, Are they I, when they watch? Because I mean, we're we're sitting here. There's a book here with your photos in it. Have yeah. they seen it? And and have you? Do you still keep in touch with them? I try to, but I um. Sorry, Paige. I'll I'll hit you up. I hit her up last year during COVID that I miss her, and you know I told yeah. her you know she had a big influence on inspired me, inspired you, and all that stuff. And I told her I'll go go um go visit her yeah. which i still haven't yeah. you know life happened and you know things get yeah. uh, so before that before you were you know somebody said take some classes and you know you go to this class you have uh great teachers because if you didn't have great teachers a lot of times people don't continue so they inspired you to say go to new york go check it out keep on going uh, what were some of the things that inspired you, like from their from their teachings, that made you say, you know what, uh, I'm not just taking a class for fun. I want to pursue this all the way as a passion and not, maybe even a career. Yeah, so I was really into photojournalism, and Paige Carl, I think she worked at uh, National Geographic. I'm not sure, but she had that background of journalism and. That really influenced me a lot, and I, I was really into it. I was reading up on all the books on photojournalists, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. their experiences, you know, what it takes to become one. Um, but at the same time, I knew that it wasn't going to be, a, you know, um, it wasn't going to be financially stable type right. of career. Yeah. So at the time, I was like, ah, okay, I love photography, but photojournalism, I'm not so sure. So uh, let me pursue more fancier um, commercial photography I and see. then ended up going to School of Visual Arts. Okay. So basically, through that process of getting into photography, you start to sort of think about it and explore and like, where could I go where it could be something that would motivate you and keep you going through that passion because what ends up happening is if you get into something like breaking for example if i only focus on battling and that's my only focus when i get to the goal or when i accomplish the goal maybe i'll say well i'm good now and maybe i'll just walk away but through that process of of getting into battling you start to find other ways like teaching maybe starting a business maybe uh, shooting videos, doing all kinds of, of work. Is that so similar to what happened to you? Whereas now you have something, you have a, a, a passion for something, but now you're exploring how to keep going with this passion without losing the, the, the uh, interest in it. I mean, photojournalism itself, I saw a big merit in it. You know, it's a very okay. um, rewarding job to be able to share what you see to the world. Yeah. So that that's what really draw me into uh, the genre, and to continue the story from you yeah. know when I went to New York, um, I met Edward Keating, rest in peace. Uh, he passed away recently, but he was someone that influenced me a lot, molding my philosophy in photography. Okay, um, I met him at a social documentary class at social, mm. um, at School of Visual Arts. Uh, I thought I was gonna pursue commercial, you know, all the fancy, you know, photo shoots in the studio and all that. But my heart was just in documentary. Like, okay, um, if not photojournalism, there is documentary. Yeah. is what I found out when I went there. And then um, one time when I met Paige Carl, while I was going to SVA, she was like. 
hey, you don't have to do hard photojournalism. You don't have to go to hard stories and mm. hard news. There, are, there is soft news. There's cultural stuff that you can do. Yeah. And that's all that that aligns with the break in uh, yeah, topic that I'm shooting. And um, that's what I wanted to do um, yeah. make a book that can stand on the same bookshelf with Martha Cooper's Hip Hop Files and yeah. Joe Conzo's Born in the Bronx, but showing the expansion of hip hop. That's why we named it Moving Forward because mm -hmm. the culture is moving forward it's, yeah. it's expanding it's going to the whole world and it, you know it's dominating yeah, it's fashion yep. you know news everything right mm -hmm. and more people are getting into it at a younger age so it's yeah. just gonna keep on going and i think there's more to hip-hop than just rap and i think it's important mm -hmm. for us people like us to um share that right elements yeah. because we were fortunate enough to be exposed to find it to the culture earlier on mm -hmm. which really fulfilled my life i'm sure yours as well yeah, what, what it does it, uh, at least for me I, I spent a lot of time trying to figure things out trying this trying that getting a job and then going to work every day and, and always asking myself is this what i really want to do so i st sort of struggled with going all the way with breaking because I didn't think I could create a job out of it. So for a long time, I was sort of on the fence, you know, like getting other jobs, trying to figure things out. But then you get to a point in life where you kind of grow up to a point where you realize that it's now or never. Like this is the life that I've been given. This is my chance to go out and pursue my dream full time. So is either I do it or I don't. And, you know, for me, I made the decision, but I started getting into dance when I was five years old. So when I talk to you and, and your photography and the amount of work that I, that you produce, like all the time, I see you everywhere. I mean, you have photos of me that I've never seen before. You have photos of my dog even, you know? So like you got so many things that you've been archiving, but you got into photography later on, not when you were five, but when you were a kid, did you already have an, an eye for, for just creative eye? Because being a photographer, it's not only buying a camera and taking a photo. It's art. So that what you see, you show people, that's your creative eye. Did you always have that as a kid? Were you a creative kid growing up? Um, definitely. I think I was a creative uh, kid growing up. I did a lot. I did a lot. Uh, my mom, I was born and raised in Gangnam. Gangnam style. Oh, really? Okay, okay. <laughs> um, it was big. The, even back then in the nineties, it was, it was known for um, education. You know, a lot of tiger moms. My mom also. Okay. So I did art classes. I did swimming classes. I did um, like I did gymnastics. Kept you busy. I mean, I've done all sorts of stuff. Mm. I learned piano, which I didn't like at the time, which I'm grateful for now because I can just you know play a tune yeah. if I want to and you know it's very enjoyable so you know growing up um, she taught me a lot um, I wasn't into like visual stuff as much but definitely into creative stuff making like flyers for the class when mm. we had like class events and things like that um, but I tell my um, photographers and colleagues and my assistants whoever uh, I tell them photography is not only about the visual. It's all about the experience from the beginning to end. The process. The process. You got to enjoy the process. Um, when you're working with a model, you know, you have to make them feel comfortable. You have to get them mm -hmm. into a vibe that you can get so you can get mm -hmm. that shot. So it's all about, you know, being able yeah. to handle the situation. It's not only about the visuals. Right. So, so do you all think the experiences that I, you know, grew up with, I think it helped me mm -hmm. be able to... Um, talk to people and you know approach people in ways right. that so so your mom basically would take you to a bunch of different activities she used to take me to church and she would she took me to um the buddhist temples i went to catholic church with my mm -hmm. mom's side i went to christian church with my dad's side oh, wow. i've i've been to all yeah. religions and i believe in all religions so so you going uh to all these you know piano gymnastics i mean Swimming, i'm, I'm sure i'm sure if there was a break in school you'd probably be there too at the time uh if no? it was around <laughs> i feel like the time was different so maybe i wouldn't 
I'll, so just to uh, give you an insight into how time was back in the days, um, I, I was one of the tallest kids in class, like even amongst, you know, with the guys and girls yeah. together. Um, I was one of the tallest and I was athletic. So I would be pretty good at all the sports. Um, but w- girls had to play one sport and guys would play soccer and baseball. And okay. I, the teacher would tell me to go play with the guys because, you know, if you're I play tall. with the girls, my team wins all the time. Oh, so okay. it's, it makes the game unfair. Yeah. So you're so pretty athletic then. I was very athletic. I yeah. would, you know, girls would come to me and that guy did this to me, whatever, you know, I'll go um, run yeah. after so him. So you would stand up for them. I've done that a couple yeah. times. Yeah. yeah. So. And, and so... Um, you know, the reason why I ask about, you know, your mom and taking you to all these different activities, because in a lot of ways, like for me, for example, my mom always kind of let me do whatever. Go. What do you want to do now? You want to start a little band that she would like get little supply for me and say, OK, go start a little band with your friends. And that process mm-hmm. of encouragement, always saying, oh, you want to you want to paint that? OK, go ahead and go paint and here's some something to go paint with. And and through that, I, I became more creative because. I was always trying new things and I was always in many ways exposed to uh, and, and, and told that it's OK to to go be a singer. And it's OK if you want to be a movie star, it's OK to do that, too. Like it was always like that, although we didn't have much. So I, I now that I'm older, I look back on that and, and I think about like where my life has gone. And I think it had a lot to do with that. I kind of trace it back. So do you trace a lot of the, the things you're experiencing now? Because you're super successful. And and I know you see, and that's <laughs> the humble you, the humble you, but you're super successful. And, and I mean that because uh, historically, you have a lot of photos that people will look back on someday and say, hey, remember that time when, you know, this, this and that and this happened and you're going to have a, fo- a photo of that with a story to it. And so I look at that as success. I don't mean success in what maybe what people associate it with, which is like having a big house with a, you know, a large bank account. Mm-hmm. But success in this in this in the sense that you're inspiring and you're reaching people in a different type of way. Right. So do you trace it back? Uh, do you think that that your mom's taking you to these activities inspired in some way? A little piece for of sure, you? For sure. For sure. I mean, my mom. Shout out to my mom. 엄마 사랑합니다. Um, she always told me you can do anything you want. You know, she always made me believe in myself. She's still a big support. Um, I would thank her for everything that I've done in my life. Yeah. If she, if, if it wasn't for her, I might not be here. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, that's how sure. I feel. Cause like in the teens, you know, things were hard. I was such an active kid in Korea. And then I came here when I was 12 to the suburbs of, uh, Virginia, where mm. you couldn't go out and you know, drive off and, you know, because I'm used to living in the city, being so active after school. I'll come home at like late at night until like my mom sends somebody out to get to me. To go get you. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I won't be coming home, you yeah. know. And now when I think back, like when I came here, I felt so claustrophobic and I was, you know, I was going through the teenage years as, as well. Yeah. And that You're really 12, messed right? me up. Yeah. So yeah, that was, change of like. You're, you know, you grow up somewhere, you're in the city, you know where everything is and, you know, you know where you navigate around there. But now coming to a, a, a different place where you don't really know is totally different. Yeah. And I was so young and naive. I was just used to seeing like Cosby Show, um, Knight Rider, all this American yeah, like 90s, stuff, 80s. thinking that when I come to America, I'll be going to Disney World. Mm. I'll be living in a big ass, big house and, you know, all this like stuff that it, that was in my head didn't materialize when i yeah. came here um, my parents they were busy working you know yeah. them they themselves were struggling i bet now when yeah. i think about it um my i was the youngest so my brother and my sister who was always there weren't there because at that time they were going to college so oh, okay. they weren't they weren't home so it was like yeah. a new experience for me and um i studied hard but when I went, you know, I was getting straight A's and all that yeah. stuff because that's what I was doing in Korea. But when I went to high school, it's a little struggle. Things changed. Yeah, I mean, that, know, I but think... that's normal though. Like, people are figuring things out, you know. And, and I feel like it shouldn't be so hard on on anyone that that is totally normal. You're figuring things out. 
Yeah, you you go through um, such a process that it makes you tougher. Yeah. Yeah, so I was going through the rebellious years um, after high school, being all confused with my life, identity crisis, everything yeah. was going on. That's why my sister recommended, hey, take a photography oh, class. okay, okay. Maybe this will give you some kind of focus. And change it your did. life. It did. I mean, it, change your life. It changed my life for yeah. real. Um, I thought at that time that for me to produce good photos, I have to be good. Like, I have to be a good person to take good to, photos, yeah. right? So I, you know, I changed my ways a lot and I try to become someone that's more real, original. Yeah. And so you, so after you found breaking, you found hip hop, you found breaking. Um, now, years later, looking back on all the, you know, all the photos you've taken and all the places you've gone, because a lot of times you have a photo, but like you said, that process of you traveling somewhere, meeting somebody, you know, building with somebody and then getting that photo, which is like the end result of all that process, right? After going through all this and, and being a part of the breaking culture, because you are, right? I mean, you're now a part of our community. What would you say is one of your most memorable like moments of when you, when you've that one time, that first time where you go to a jam or you go wherever you went, and that first time that you took a photo and you realize that, wow, like I found something special in my life that I want to keep doing. Did that moment happen for you? Was it one moment or was it several moments? Uh, I think it was a combination of different moments. Um, when I look back, I mean, I, I'm archi I started archiving all the work recently. It looks like I've shot about 150 events, um, maybe more. Uh, so 20s, I got into photography. I was just immersed in photography. Yeah. I carried my camera all the 24 hours. You know, it was be, be Wherever my Wherever you saw it, you just... It, it was on me all the time. I yeah. have photos from the streets of my family and friends, everything. Um, so that's how my 20s went. At 29, back to that... Uh, I shouldn't say the years. So I was... It's all, age, but, yeah, um, no, it's all good. Yeah, no, it's all good. Anyways, 2007, I found, uh, I, I got into hip hop, right? I mean, I got, I started shooting break in. Um, so my 30s went by with break in and photography. Yeah. You know, shooting break in with photography. So on top of that, when I turned into 40s, what I needed was um, business knowledge. Yeah. So, you know, going through photography in 20s, going through hip hop in 30s, I made many, many mistakes financially and mm -hmm. in that aspect. And that was where I was coming short. So last mm -hmm. three, four years, it was all about business, business, learning business. Yeah. Um, I just finished a uh, boot camp for a PMP, trying to be certified mm -hmm. soon. Um, What's PMP? It's a project management professional. It's an okay. exam you take, uh, mm. and then you get certified, and you you can get paid a little more oh, for see. the same stuff that you do. Okay. Um, but I mean, going back to your question about that moment, if yeah. I were to like talk about that one moment, um, so when I went to Korea in '07, I didn't know anybody. I just knew f physics and Hong Tan. I emailed last for one. I emailed Rivers. I emailed um, Gamblers. I think I I emailed like the known crews, like hey, you know, I'm a student from New York. I want to yeah. document uh, your life, you know, b-boy life. Mm -hmm. uh, no one, of course, no one replied back. Mm. Um, they were at their peak. Yeah, they I were think, battling, traveling. Yeah, 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 they were really busy, and I didn't get any reply back. And I was just sitting. Um, in my sister's sister's apartment and i wa i'm watching this show on tv and it's on breaking i think it was r16 or something right i was yeah. like i came to shoot breaking why am i sitting here and watching it's this on, on TV. tv right yeah. so i started like just you know asking all my friends and family everybody do you know somebody do Where you know anybody that breaks so my sister's colleague at her school um new tip crew okay so he hooked me up with one of the members there. So that started 
my um, shadowing of TIP crew for three and a half months for so that you were, whole summer. So you were just shadowing them wherever they went? Yeah, so they would start practicing. They, they'll come to practice about between three to five, depending on if they have shows or not. Yeah. And then they'll practice till like nine, ten. And this was back in the days. So they were in a third floor basement. Wow. I mean, three floors down basement. So, you know, three was, floors down? Yeah, it wow. was hot. It was hot there. And they then they like had un some underground. Underground, underground. Under, under, underground, yeah. right? And they had these fans, but it wouldn't do anything. Cause, and they you know, were there for hours, right? Yeah, and, you know, imagine B-boys, you know, they're doing all these moves, you know, practicing on routines. It gets sweaty in there. Yeah. Everybody has their shirts off, you know. Now I'm like, I don't even care. They, you know, yeah. dress change in front of me doesn't really, you know, do You're anything. You're a professional. Been there, done that yeah. too many times. But um, so I was following TIP crew for three months. I would go to the practice before they come. And then I would leave after they all leave. So that I did that for three months. I would follow them to all the events. I followed them to an event in Hong Kong. Um, so one day we go to Battle of the Year Korea. See, I knew there was one moment. <laughs> Battle of the Year Korea. Is happening. It's my first major event yeah, big that one. I'm shooting after shooting all the practices only, right? They were, you know, training for routines. You know, they were telling me they would always get second place at Battle mm. of the Year, although they were in you know, the longest running crew in Korea. They were never, they weren't lucky in the international. Mm. I see. So game. they'd always make it to like the finals, but never to the finals, but they'll not, they won't make, they won't, they win. won't make it to yeah. the, yeah. So, Anyway, so Battle of the Year hap Korea happens. I go and then I spot physics. <laughs> ah, and you were you were messaging trying to find them right at that time, or or well, after I got um, connected with TIP, I stopped. Oh, okay. I stopped because I I'm gonna shadow this. Crew. Yeah, you found like I was a, set yeah. on because I was still you know it was the beginning of my thesis. Okay. So I was gonna at that time I was gonna only work on it for a year, mm. for my last uh, yeah, you know for graduating. Thesis, yeah. yeah, so. I was stuck on TIP, but at the same time, I knew of rivers and, you know, yeah. physics and, yeah, and... Yeah, they were pretty yeah, famous. Yeah, yeah, I go to the event and they're just like walking around, you know? Yeah. I'm like, just, oh my gosh, how do I bring up the courage? Yeah. Because everybody else I'm cool with, but physics, I'm like, oh man, it's B-Boy Physics. Yeah, and he has like this charisma about yeah, he's him. he's got that aura, you know? Yeah. yeah. But then, you know, I went all the way to Korea. I, flew thousands of miles yeah. to do this i built up my courage go up to him i say like hey can i take a photo i said it mm -hmm. and i don't even know how it sounded i mean that's how i remember i said it like whispering i don't even know but he yeah. was like being really cool sure and then he just kind of sat down on the chair posed for me took that shot and i was like Oh, oh, you man. got it. I, I, got <laughs> I mean, it. it wasn't the best of the photograph. It's yeah. just of him sitting on a chair. Mm -hmm. But to me, at that moment, I was like, man, I took a photo of physics. Yeah. And he and he said yes. And after, like, you know, trying to figure it out, you finally are there with him and pop, get the so photo. So that moment still um, sticks out. Yeah, it's the little things, right? Sometimes it's the little, little things. Little moments. Yeah, little, little moments, moments. That, that are special to you. And when you talk about them, people can feel that passion of that moment. It's so innocent in many ways because you're there, this huge event, you're following TIP, you already have a project, you have your thesis, you're in, a, you know, you go back to Korea after living here, and then now you're, you know, you're, you're traveling, and and then you run into these, uh, into a uh, um, physics, and let me take a photo. He says yes. Yeah. So you know, 2007 when I went out to Korea to shoot, to shoot. B-Boys, uh, I've been in the States for like 17 years by then. I've gone into Korea like maybe once or twice. Oh, wow. Never went since, back. You, since you came here? Yeah. Okay. But since I started shooting hip-hop, it, it really um, mm. connected me back to Korea. And now I try to go every year. Wow. I try to go um, photograph B-Boys, see what's going on, you yeah. know, meet with Keep people. Up. and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I, and I know that uh, out there. like I was talking with Bourne about Korea and the Korean scene and he mentioned like 2010 as being like a big like a like a break in, in Korea was like really big like on TV and everything. So 2007 
spell of the year. I think TIP came in second again. Oh, they didn't. They didn't take. That I forget. One. I forget. But they didn't. They didn't make it. Okay. And September comes. I come back to the states and I go back to school. And you know, by the time I start school, people are trying to figure out what what they what they want to shoot. But mm. I already had like three months worth of work. Yeah. That I yeah, uh, had to edit. Yeah. Um. So I come back to the states and um. September starts, and you know, I already have all this work, so I'm editing, I'm editing all that, and then was it October or late September? Differ people differ. Uh, contacts me, it's like I have big news, I have good news. I'm like, what is it? What is it? Yeah. Like we we're going to UK champs. Did you or, know differ TIP right? So that's yeah how yeah. Okay. I mean TIP yeah. everyone like people differ, people virus, people snake, people uh, yeah. frog. Everybody were there at the time, but um. Yeah, Defer was telling me they're going to UK. I'm like, what? Yeah. Like, finally? They're like, yeah, we won the championship in Korea, so we're going to UK, what? like champs for sure. I'm like, what? That means I got to come. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, so I talked to my school, and they're like, yeah, go ahead and do it. So I fly into uh, UK with you know, a few of my friends, and you know, they win it. What? Was that yeah. the first time? So like they always second place, and then this time they take the whole thing. Yeah, they they go to UK. Oh. Uh, they won UK. B Boy Differ won the best Chief Rocker Award. Um, B Boy Eyes, who had an injury, knee injury, um, from a performance in Sweden, he was on a wheelchair, and then doctor told him he could, he's not gonna walk again. But he got himself to um walk again and to dance again okay. he was going through that uh, phase when i was shadowing them and they talked about it that's why he's being a little more careful with yeah. his moves it's scary to him to, yeah, um, to do, do hard moves and whatnot yeah. but he won seven to smoke what? at uk so with the messed up knee i mean it wow. was like a champion coming back to being a champion again because yeah. he was known to be a like a genius b-boy yeah. in, when he was like 18 19 like with physics yeah. and along with other top Wow. E boys. Now yeah. he's a professor at a college, oh, wow. okay. Hotel College, where um, he's teaching. I mean, that their school teaches graffiti, you know, break in all like styles. Arts. Yeah, yeah, art school. So, so to show. So you have a you have a photo here, and uh, you want to you want to share it. So I mean, just this photo, this blue photo, is of the students of B Boy Eyes at the school. They were okay. doing um graduation performance and i just visited and took some shots but awesome. this was the photo that when they, did this book come out that they chose this came out um 2021 i believe okay so recent yeah i received a copy wow. october 1st and who are the signatures on here uh so i was working on a movie set called swerve the movie okay. uh directed by the magnificent Raphael Xavier, uh, known That's as awesome. Faisine. So I had him uh, sign here. Mm -hmm. And then co-director, amazing Gary Dorden from CSI, from nice. the music video again, Janet Jackson's again. Uh, he signed here. Uh, That's pretty cool. Awesome. Yeah, it's a big milestone so, for me because... Mm -hmm. when So these photos, when did you take these photos though? So this was, I think, 2010. Okay. This was actually on the rooftop of my apartment with my roommates. I had a oh, uh, wow. lifestyle b-boy as a roommate, Kenye. Hey, shout out to Kenye. Mm -hmm. So we we're just playing around. We put some linoleums down on the on and our rooftop. We we're just playing photos. around, and then this was the photo they cool. chose. Yeah. I sent them like 20 some photos, and, and these then they two were these the two. one that. Wow. Well, this, again, you know, this is a big accomplishment, right? To have your photos and knowing the process of these photos, for example, they're now they're in a book. So that work and all the effort you put in traveled and then it got to this point. I look at everything like that. It means a lot to me. It's a big milestone for me, mm -hmm. even if it's just two photos. Um, yeah. To me, this is like a foreshadowing to what's the to come future. next. Because yeah. I'm trying to do a book like this on breaking. Yeah. Because this this is on hip hop. But I mean, it's got graffiti stuff and all that mm -hmm. in it. But you have you're gonna see all this rappers yeah, right. throughout 
the yeah, era is, history. right? Yeah. We want something like that for, for break-in break specifically. Yeah. And, and you have a lot. I have to a lot. Add into it with stories to kind of like the story you told me of TIP. You have the behind the scenes story that I'm sure people would be interested in knowing because it, it's really uh, telling the story of a photo behind, you know, people don't get to see that, right? So when you take a photo, a lot of times people will see the finished product. Oh, that's a cool photo. But they have no idea what you had to go through just to get that photo. So I told my friends uh, that are not in photography, one fun way to look at a photo is to try to look at it from a photographer's eye. I mean, you're yeah. seeing that from a photographer's eye, but actually imagine yourself as the photographer and then you, you're going to see like these different angles where like how did this photographer get this angle, this angle from this with the lighting and this everything. person must have been standing on something or this person must have been on like down on the ground like how yeah. did, this must this person must have been in the ocean when she shot this or yeah. you get this uh, you get a different, different perspective, perspective. Right. yeah and like i was saying it's sometimes hard to see that so you really got to look at the details of any art piece right uh, to s- kind of get an idea of like what was going on behind that. So like I do that all the time. I see something and then I wonder how they got it. It could be video or photo or just art in general. Somebody was thinking something like we, before we were before we started doing the podcast. I was listening to like Mozart and Beethoven. I, yeah, I saw and that. I and and I was talking and I basically said like I wonder what they were thinking about when they were composing this music. It's, it's no different than what you were going through to get that photo so when i was shadowing tip i would interview them i would take on notes i i would ask them all these questions who's your favorite b-boy how did you get into this and all the stories that they told me and the actions that they've shown me throughout that experience Mm -hmm. made me really believe in the culture that it's something worth documenting yeah you saw more i saw I saw the culture as something that's worth documenting and I wanted to be the one to do it. Even if other people were doing it, I yeah. still wanted to do it. Because everybody not... has their different style. Everybody has their their different eye, their yeah, vision. Yeah, of course. So, I mean, I went through the freeze yeah. phase. You know, I've done the freezes and all that stuff first couple yeah. of years and whatnot. Yeah, all the cool, yeah. you know, the you know the shots that B-Boys yeah. uh, like. The commercial ones but that everyone shares. I got tired of that pretty quick yeah i like storytelling Mm -hmm. photographs i like i like simplicity but at the same time for my photography i like complex complex a lot of information on an image type of uh photograph Mm. because i like looking at a photograph for a long time like a deeper deeper meaning to a photo yeah, just one shot telling the whole story like there's a person in the corner eyeing this and there's another section of um, people here that's doing this. And there's so yeah. much information that you can look at a photograph for five, ten minutes. And, and see different things. You, you start hearing sounds. And yeah, you yeah. start hearing, like, that. you feel the atmosphere. and Yeah, that's the passion in you. You know, because mm. you understand it. And, and uh, it's it's your art form, your form of expression, right? So... You, you got into it, you did your thesis, you know, you're in school at the time, now you're back in the States, uh, you go and, and they win, now you come back, you know, you do your thesis, and uh, at what point in time did you say to yourself, I could actually make a living doing this, and I want to pursue this as a career full-time? Oh, I knew I wasn't going to be able to make a living off of it, okay. so while I was in school Mm -hmm. i pursued weddings on the side yeah and because weddings good money i knew it was good money and i felt like it was a perfect place to uh, practice yeah Yeah. because they want your they want to be take i mean they want to be photographed they're paying you to photograph them you're in a perfect position to do anything you want but Mm -hmm. photojournalism you know they don't want sometimes they don't want you to take your pictures you know it's you're different. into hard situations, you know, but yeah. weddings, you have everything. It's an easy practice. You make money while you're doing it. So yeah. I was doing that. So I could say wedding supported this. The starting of your the career. The passion project. Yeah. Because this and is my personal project, right? Yeah. No one funded me. 
-hmm. Everything uh, was funded by myself. Yeah. Um, and do you have the list that I brought? Um, like, I do, but let's keep going, right? I know that there's a lot on the list, and, and you know, yeah. uh, I was trying to count how many events are it's on there. It's got numbers on the side. Yeah, and yeah. it's a lot. It's so, a lot. you know, thinking back on, you could write a book on that, like a, a just a book on totally. the stories of you going to all these events. One of the things that I'm really passionate about is the youth and breaking and, and how it's changing the world right as we speak. Yeah. Anywhere you go to any event, uh, back in the days, 2010, for example, if you went to a jam, I don't know how it was like in Korea at the time, but you didn't see that many kids at events. And if you did, you might see like one or two, you know, not a lot. But nowadays, wherever you go, there's groups there on another level. It's like a different, a different thing, you know. So for me, uh, when I see the, uh, that like everything changing and moving forward like that, it, it makes me feel good. But also, I I can imagine somebody like yourself who has actually seen them grow up because you have photos of some of the kids when they were really little. And now you see them at older and taking over the breaking scene in many ways, right? Because that's what's happening. The 15, 16 year olds are starting to like compete with the adults, which is pretty cool to see. Yeah, and um, just from I was I just mentioned briefly I worked on a movie set with Raphael last week. Yeah, it was a whole week of um, spending the time with bike riders. So they call it bike life. These kids doing wheelies and doing tricks yeah. on the road. Bike life. I saw the same thing as I saw in break life. Yeah. You know, it's about the be life. You know, yeah, it's, it's about <laughs> it's a lifestyle. Definitely right? so, is a lifestyle. So I think a lot, a lot of things like you're talking about the youth and uh, and breaking and, and you know even the what's it called uh, bike? Uh, what do they call it? Bike life. Bike life is that? I was what like, the, is there like an art form to it? Like a breaking? bunch of kids. Yeah. They were riding, doing all the tricks, and I'm like, hey, any of you guys dance? Cause they look like yeah. b boys to me, like, yeah. right? Cause they're very street. Yeah. This is a very street culture. And you guys dance, all look at me all like, like what? this. I'm like, yeah. nah, we Bike ride. Life. Yeah, we ride. Yeah, so, that's what they say. So, you know, back in the days, baseball, soccer, tennis, you know, base, like sports that have been around for a long time. But I think nowadays, or maybe even back then, I don't know. I was, you know, I was a kid myself. But um, if there were, had been schools to teach breaking, if there had been these newer type of art forms, I feel like kids would gravitate towards that. And some kids didn't couldn't find anything just because it wasn't there. But nowadays, it, you know, if you want to be a B-boy or B-girl, you can you can learn that. If you want to get into the bike life, you can also do that. So it's like there's more things out there that are accessible. So now the kid that is into none of these sports, which I get all the time, a parent coming in and saying, like, this is the only thing that, you know, my daughter or my son has ever wanted to do on their own without me like having to take them having to so alternative arts them. yeah alternative arts is is somewhat of the future too right where people now can get into different things um some of the kids nowadays have millions of followers on like on youtube and they're like 12 years old yeah, 13 these years bikers old. they have 20k 30k i'm like yeah. what do you guys do yeah. you guys are 15 so it's like sky's the limit these days with technology and, and the way things are going and alternative arts so to find out um in that bike life the peak age is between like 12 to 17 really? or something i could be wrong don't quote me on yeah. it but huh it's very young there's this uh kid called D block, I forget D block on Instagram. Um, he's like nine. Wow. He rides Lambos and he does what? like all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I heard. I mean, check him out. He does yeah. amazing stuff, and he's nine. Hmm. And cool. I see it as um, something that can be possible because of the support from the parents. Yeah, the parents. So if you see, you know, Bail Bail Rock, Bail Rock uh, yeah. from Rocksteady, the, the he won. So you think you you can dance? Yeah. Um, I used to see him at Rocksteady for yeah, anniversaries, right? And he would be like a little kid. Yeah, a little kid. He, his parents flew him in mm -hmm. from Cali, you know. Supporting him. Lots of support um, from the young younger age, mm -hmm. right? It's a different time. Like back in our, day, our days, I mean, I'm in my 40s, but, you know, back in my days, parents, they had a kid and we kind of grew up on our own. Like, yeah, yeah, they did this and that, but we kind of grew up on our own. Whereas nowadays, 
yeah. when I see my friends with their kids in elementary they're school. They're involved and, in what they're doing. Uh, parents have a big uh, role in mm -hmm. the success of the kids. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I see that some too. parents I see are starting a trust fund when they're born. So yeah. they start off with this funds in their account that just keeps growing. So by the time, time they're to, 16 yeah. and 18, they, they, got money they for start school with and everything. Yeah, they start with something and yeah. parents start a business for their middle school kid who can mm -hmm. do like DIY stuff and sell yeah. them online and they're making mad loot and yeah. I mean, I think NFT for... stuff. For us, though, like, uh, you know, coming here as an immigrant, I think our parents came here and they were trying to figure it out, too. So they like my mom, even now, you know, if I call my mom and say I need some help, she'll she'll still do it. Right. She steps in. But the fact that they weren't there to kind of take us to support us, it was really because they were working yeah. all the time to give us basic needs. Yeah, different times, different yeah, times. Different times. Um, they did what they could. I realize now that I put my parents to too high of a standard. I didn't realize that for them too, you know, they're being 51 yeah. for the first time. They're being 60 for the first time. They're being a parent for the first time. Mm -hmm. So for them, I'm sure it was a struggle and I sure gave them a hard time mm -hmm. like in my teen years, but mm -hmm. you know. I came back. It's not about what you can't control what happens, but you can definitely control what you do about it yeah. after a fact, right? Yeah. And I've sure. learned from my experiences and I feel yeah. like I've come a long way. I still have a long way to go, but I also did come a long way. So yeah. like and now that you, success you talk about, yeah. um, I do feel it. Yeah. Because it, it's there. In my own right. sense. In my own sense. Yeah. And you yeah. know, for me, um I when, so a lot of times people will say nice things, right? Like, oh, you know, I love your photo. You're amazing, you, you know. And for me, I, I when people tell me like, oh, you know, great job on, on what you're doing. And I, I, so I take it and I, you know, thank you. It's nice. But I also feel like I, I'm just beginning. Like I have a lot more. Maybe when I'm old, when I'm like 80 years old and I look back on my life and I, if I, I can look at the at the full picture of my life and say, you know what? Um, in the beginning was rough. Towards the middle, it got a little bit better. And then when I turned around 40, it started to make more sense. And I started to be able to produce based on the information that I've already gathered what I ultimately wanted to present, which yeah. is in, in my case, it's now all about like positive energy. Like how many people can I inspire? How many, how many, how, how many people can you inspire by just talking about your passion for photography? I'm sure there's somebody out there who wants to get into photography, who would love to, you know, do something like you're doing, what would, how can, how can somebody start? Like, what would you tell the young Monica Chang uh, years later, now reflecting back on your career, um, on how to start a career in photography and, and based on your experience? I'm just going to say Nike sponsor me. <laughs> just do it there you go just do it you just gotta do it you got don't be afraid of uh, failures because looking back all those failures were such a big learning experiences for me i would never change anything about yeah. it except you know like just start the damage i did to you know like my family well, <laughs> like just yeah, having but... them see me go through hard times yeah. is hard for them yeah. right like because it want... is hard yeah, and mm -hmm. photography, it's a struggle. You have to be ready for it. You got to be hungry for it. You're not going to last. If you don't have this passion, then no one, even no one believes it, you got to believe, yeah, in, believe yourself. in yourself. Um, it's going to be tough. Like on the first mm -hmm. day of the orientation at School of Visual Arts, they told us up front, 1%, one of you guys are going to be doing what you major in it. after you, not even make it, like no. one of you, 1% will do work in the major that you uh, major in. Wow. So yeah. that kind of stuck with me in my head. And I was like, okay, no matter how hard it gets, I'm just going to survive. Yeah. So I shot weddings. I shot family stuff. I shoot events, corporate events, models. I shoot everything. Whatever I never it wanted takes. To, I mean, also as a photographer, I never wanted to be one specific. I, I never call myself like hip hop photographer or wedding photographer, I call myself 
photographer because I want to be someone that chooses to shoot hip hop, but they can able to handle that's able to handle everything. It's yeah. not because you only know this, you do this. It's like you know how to do everything, but you choose to do this. Yeah. You know, I in at some point in time bought a camera and said, you know what? I got what it takes. I want to become a photographer. And I started taking photos, you know, and you take a couple of good photos and then you, you think you're, you know, you're, you got it. But one of the things based on people who I've talked to who are professionals in their field is that you can't just take one photo and call yourself a professional. You yeah. got to be consistent for a long, long, long time. And then someday you might say you are, you're a success, but you can't become you know that reach that level of success with just taking one or two photos you got to be consistent so not giving up so what what has kept you fueled and motivated to continue even though the the book that you talk about the you know the breaking book with photos hasn't been Called created moving forward moving forward hasn't hasn't been created you haven't you haven't done it is that something that motivates you that say you know what i need to keep going archiving keep on attending events because you're still doing that now and it's been many years 2000 what was it 2007, 2007 summer of 2007 yeah. i started so 14 years of following breaking as a passion project um breaking obviously is something that you're interested in but i feel like through that process you found hip-hop and then you kind of are also living the lifestyle right of, of being somebody in hip-hop so I have to talk about Edward Keating. So he's somebody that influenced me a lot on my philosophy of photography because I met him at social documentary class. I started interning for him. Um, he was a real character. He was a real character. A lot of the interns couldn't last more than three months. I lasted about two years on and off. And then after I graduated, um, I assisted him on and off for like another couple of years. Uh, he won Pulitzer for... Uh, his work in 9-11. He was a senior okay. photographer in New York Times. Uh, he was mm. represented by a contact press agency. Um, so all this time I was assisting him and interning for him. He was working on this project called Route 66, which okay. was his, his project, right? He was yeah. working for New Yorker. He was shooting for all these magazines and, you know, top um, publications mm. but also he had as a photographer he had the series on route 66 okay um and he struggled to have that published i he only shot black and white film and okay. he was a like a photographer so i would always have his backs with a bunch of you yeah. know films and you know when he's done you know i'll have the films changed and have it ready for him to you know to get keep shoot going, after yeah. the job we'll go he couldn't trust the lab so we'll go to like the dark room and we'll process it we'll go scan it and then i'll like dust it off digitally and then send that into the publications we did all that together wow um so i learned the process through watching him work on his yeah. project right and one funny story was that um he told me i mean he knew I, he he was with me for like three, four years into my project doing uh, B-Boys, mm -hmm. he told me, if you don't edit down to 100 best photos, don't even come back. Wow. And he went away to Martha's Vineyard for his uh, summer vacation. And then when he came back, I never went back. I, mm. never, um, you never finished went back. That, I never finished that 100 edit. Yeah. But, I mean, there were a host of other reasons why yeah. you know what triggered that decision but at the same time i always thought that i'll go back yeah. to him when i'm ready which has been many years mm -hmm. um i always thought in my head that he was gonna write the forward forward for the book but i found out like a few weeks back that he passed from from his agency uh instagram and it took me by such a shock it, it really mm -hmm. i never thought that he was gonna pass so early. Yeah. Um, like that day I thought a lot about how not to wait. Yeah. And thank people when you mm -hmm. wanna thank them and don't wait. 
So, mm. you know, I started archiving my stuff. Maybe something will happen to me. Let me get this out before something. Mm. I got to stay healthy, you know. Take care of yourself, yeah. But Ed Keating, he really like instilled in me what photography is all about. He told me, okay, as a, you know, think about the most famous photographers, you know, like any Livovitz, you know, it could be Robert Frank, could be most famous photographers in the world. You try to think how many photographs do you know by that photographer? It's not going to be more than 10, even if it's someone that you really love, right? Mm -hmm. And he's talking about make, making that iconic image that people will remember you by. Mm. Like we're not trying to like when I go sh when I go shoot a jam, especially when I'm shooting for myself, I'm not being commissioned. And if I'm shooting for myself, I give an assignment to myself. Yeah. Sometimes it could be limitations. Sometimes it could be a topic. But, you know, I do that to with myself so that I'm going for that one shot that's going to yeah. be in people's in people's head like. Even Forever. years yeah. down the road, yeah. like maybe even after I die, yeah. when people think about breaking, they, that photo comes to mind. That's my goal. Like yeah. that's what I'm up, up against, right? So it's like you could go out and take 100 photos. Mm -hmm. You could take 80 um, safe photos that people will be just happy with. You know, yeah. that, that you can do, right? Anybody mm -hmm. can do that. But can you do one image that's going to stick with people in people's head like mm. it's gonna be ingrained it's gonna be remembered they'll yeah. resonate yeah. with it that's it, awesome it, that's that's what he taught me right so i'm going for that one image sometimes i'll waste 90 photos to get, to that, get that one, one image, one image. Yeah. and that's what matters yeah like for so, for people like us like that takes photography seriously yeah we're not just trying to take good freeze photos. We're hmm. trying to take a photograph that shows the lifestyle of a b-boy or a b-girl. Yeah. Tells a story. That can have people understand mm -hmm. the culture. Yeah. So um, you learned a lot from him, right? Through that process of, of, in many ways, it seems like you were assisting him assisting interning i started yeah. interning but i ended up assisting and and uh, you know that's a great way to learn right when you follow somebody who's a professional and you see their process you pick up on things and then you remember things like of when course. you were just talking about him i just was sitting here because i could tell that it, it means a lot to you and you learned and you learned like just by you talking about it i could see that you're you're remembering just spending time um you know processing the photos you know you guys are there together and then you know the photos go out but that process is is like special in many ways is is something that you have and it's part of you as who you are i think as a it, person. it was all the conversations we had like yeah just during cool. work in mm -hmm. between breaks you know when yeah. we're going to the job we'll talk about stuff and he never held back he if you're curious and if Your you're answer. asking he would he would let you know yeah. and he wasn't kind either he would tell it's you tough. it sucks and i like that i don't yeah. like people saying you know this, sweet this is great this sweet is candy good. kind of you yeah. know tough love in many ways yeah right? when he says something yeah. it, he means it and when he says it's good i know that it's really like, good it's a big it's like a, he would never more. say it's good yeah he would say all the bad things about it <laughs> yeah i'll let you know and then and you like try to, oh yeah. Try to pick the best one out of all the bad I things. I mean, you get your hurt, feelings hurt. Yeah. You have but you to learn. You have to get hurt. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. Uh, taking photos as an amateur, you know, no big deal. But when you become a professional, you have to go through that. You have to learn, and you have to go through those moments of where it's not great, and somebody has to tell you because you're going to get to a point where a lot of people are going to see your work. If you're pursuing that at some point in time, something like being in a book is going to happen. And if you just, again, if you just keep being consistent. So tell me a little bit about like your process. So for example, there's an event wherever it may be. Um, you have, as you mentioned, you have a, a, a plan of what you want. You have an idea what is the process? Like, how do you do this? Do you write it down? Do you just visualize it in your mind? 
when you get to the event, do you freestyle it? Like, what is the process of you going to an event with, you know, whatever set goal you have and how do you get, get it done? What is the process? Just take me through a moment of you going to a jam and what do you do? Cause I've seen you come to an event, you know, you have, you're setting up, you're talking to people, but a lot of times I'm also either busy or, you know, I'm not there. So like, what is the process that you go through just to kind of go through one of your days? Uh, it's so different depending on it, it. There is a wide spectrum of, you know, full set of gears, you know, with two, three lights and assistance and everything full nine yards. And then there's just like very um, light, just one nifty 50 lens on it. And I'm just going to a jam to have fun. I think lately I'm towards, I'm more towards just having fun at a jam than to photograph. I will take my camera just in case something, something happens, happens that catches my eye. But at this point, I have so much content. Like I have jams that I haven't even looked at after I shot it because they mm -hmm. were like back to back. I'll be shooting five events back to back. Like when there was um, Red Bull BC1 in New York, you know, mm -hmm. everyone came through, all the Korean B-boys, everybody's in the city, you know, we're partying, we're hanging out. There's all these other events around BC1. Mm -hmm. So I'm shooting all of it. I'm shooting yeah. people hanging out. I'm shooting all the events five events back to back. I don't have time to edit those. Yeah, to I'm back to work. I'm shooting my wedding. I have to edit my wedding stuff to turn it in so I can make my living. So all those projects kind of get pushed aside yeah. and gets into the you know hard drive and kind of sits there. So you do you, you organize it? I mean, So that's organized? what I've been doing yeah. now. It's tough to stay organized when you're constantly producing content all the time. And especially when you have so much content, mm -hmm. but I mean, I have to be thankful that I have all those ingredients to work with, right? Because for photographers, you have to be very fit. You have to be fast on your feet. You have to be, if you're, no matter how good of a photographer you are, if you can't be at that place to take the photo, it means nothing. It's very mm -hmm. meaningless, right? So you have to be very fast on your feet. You have to be very... Uh, good with people to convince people to let you into certain situations to be able to like shoot yeah. that i mean just one short story about ed keating when he shot 9 11 um on the morning of he had a job for new york times and he was late he woke up late and then he was just flying into the airport and on the way he heard the news and then he went to the site where he was photographing and of course the cops and everyone banned journalists and everyone from I'm coming in because it's it's a bad bad situation yeah. and what i heard from him was that um he got a construction worker's hat and he was a very very oh. um like wrinkly old man mm -hmm. so he could pass off as a mm. maybe you know construction yeah. worker but he had the hat on he had a small leica hidden somewhere he was in there shooting and um, one of the iconic shots that he made from that time was this um, this tray of China with all the dust on top of it. It was a very quiet photo, but very, very powerful. Mm. And he got community service. He got in trouble for he it. Got, yeah. He got into trouble for that, but he got that shot. Yeah. And New York Times photographers won Pulitzer that year. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but Pulitzer. Yeah, Pulitzer. I think you're right. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't know. I mean, you probably would know better than uh, me, but I think Pulitzer, it sounds right. Yeah, Pulitzer yeah. Prize. Yeah, so they won that year, and mm -hmm. you know, he taught me they're not gonna want you. They're not gonna welcome you to to take their photograph photo. them. Right. But one thing he taught me was that you just go hang out there. And you, he, you know, he would have his, you know, camera mm -hmm. over him, but he'll never take the photo. But he'll just talk to them and just mm -hmm. like chill out. I mean, you know, chill like and hang out with them, right? Yeah. And you wait for the moment for them to invite you. So after a while, they're like, "Hey, how come you carry that camera, but you never take any photos?" Mm -hmm. They'll get curious. They'll ask you questions and. Like, hey, are you okay with me taking photos? I'll mm -hmm. take some. And then that's how it begins. And yeah. yeah, like you said, you're in their trust and there's a process to it. You can't just get in there 
Yeah. And just yeah, nobody. I mean, I see what you're saying. It's it, it, even when you're out, sometimes people are taking a photo, and if you're in the background, you're like, yeah. You know, I so mean, when is. I came into hip hop and to break in, I heard so many stories from the OGs in New York that there was a lot of exploitation on them, like in the set, you know, eighties. Taking and, their photos. Yeah, yeah, they were young at the time. You know, they went through all this fame yeah. and fortune, and then they were left alone. You know, a lot of them had to go through identity crisis yeah. and all that stuff. They didn't believe in um, media. Especially when I started, there weren't that many around. Um, there's, there was Chan Hee from Korea, mm -hmm. um, who was doing documentary photos on Korean b-boys. He's the one actually that um, told me about Martha Cooper okay. at Battle of the Year Korea when yeah. I shot physics for the first time. I met uh, Chan Hee there, and then she, he was telling me, hey, there's Martha Cooper and there's Yo Kanza. I'm like, what? There are yeah. photographers that shot this stuff? I didn't even know, but he taught me all about that and that's how i picked up on all this knowledge of like who's yeah, who um, and who did what everybody even tip was telling me there were so many people like me they came around would take some photos and do some stuff and then they'll be out at the they won't be found again they mm. would just come and take their photos and i don't know what they do with it but the dancers wouldn't see it and mm -hmm. they had this uh like, yeah, pushback. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to show it by action. So even when I came to New York, um, I would always go and shoot and then make a print. Hmm. And next next time I see them, I'll bring them a print and that way they know. Like, yeah, and hey, then I'll share my photos on uh, MySpace back in the days. Yeah. <laughs> it was before Facebook. Yeah. Um, I even remember sharing some on Friendster. I think Friendster was Friendster. around. Yeah. It was the first. Like, I remember that. Oh, you remember? It was before, Friendster. like before all MySpace. Facebook and all that stuff. Yeah, Friendster, and then it was uh, MySpace. MySpace. And then after Korea that, had Sci World. Sci World, which was like. I think we had a one called Mi Gente, which was like you know for Hispanics. Yeah, 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 yeah it's yeah, funny. Korea right? had Sci World. That's uh, pretty cool. You know what I've been thinking about though, because so much of the rap kind of domineering the whole hip hop. Mm -hmm. culture i felt like other elements need to be mm. shared more um i think the reason the audience don't know about it is because it's not out there yeah. i mean we need to put it out there so they can if they want to find it they can they have contents to mm -hmm. you know look at and i feel like business is the side where a lot of us lack mm -hmm. and i see it around me all the time too because i'm pretty new to the game myself yeah. after all the failures and you know mm -hmm. spending all my money into some things that never came back you know yeah um i want to do like a workshop series of all the business related topics for hip-hop organizers and hip-hop people mm -hmm. i mean if stance or whoever like the bigger funded people yeah. can do it that'd be awesome um how to start an llc how do you do your taxes um, how do you form your teams? How to project manage? All mm -hmm. the business entrepreneur stuff that we should know by now, by yeah. heart. I mean, right. a lot of us kind of stayed in hip hop that may mm -hmm. kept us young, but yeah, as you get older, you there's pros and cons to it, right? right? You need to keep keep a good balance, mm -hmm. and I think um, if you can stay young in hip hop, doing everything that you do, and have financial stability mm -hmm. where you keep it, you make it sustainable and you can give back yeah. to the community. Right. It's paying, it's what we talked about earlier, yeah. paying for. Yeah, that, I mean, so I try to do that with like the teachers at the school, mm -hmm. you know, set up um, like either weekly or, or semi, uh, twice a month, uh, more than anything like Zoom calls even. Let's talk about business. What do you guys want to do? Mm. And how can I help you get there? Like, what are some of the things that maybe I've learned in business? Because business, so being an artist is great. Go to a jam. It's so battle, much fun. Live the life. Have fun. But if you get really good, at some point in time, you're going to have to deal with people who are all business. And yeah. when you get to that level, if you don't have that experience, so if nobody's ever even taught you anything about that world... Uh, you are outclassed and it's very simple to, you know, for somebody to just 
sign this, sign that, move on. Again, yeah, and then you don't get yeah. the amount that you deserve and you ended up giving it to right. the rich people. I right. tell my team, hey, you don't have to make rich people richer. Let yeah. us be rich. Yeah, so it, it comes down to that, like sharing information, education, right? I think it's happening more now. And I think uh, for a long time, and there, I would say out of the 100%, if you look at a pie, 100%, of everyone breaks out of that hundred percent maybe like one percent are able to live from it and buy a house with it and you know invest with it and then everybody else maybe ten percent or make a little bit but then the rest are just having fun with it right I think that also is different country to country because I think mm -hmm. Korea they want to make it your full living it's yeah. not lifestyle b-boy mm -hmm. like in new york i okay. see many that are just lifestyle b-boys that they're, they're not into competing yeah. but they're dope b-boys b-girls yeah. but they're not all about going out to win a yeah. battle you know not everybody wants to do that yeah but in korea i feel like at a certain level when you get to the top yeah like you're trying to make a living out of it like yeah. what's the point yeah i mean you're putting so much time into it might as well and another thing is like i'll, I'll give use myself as an example I was I had all these part time jobs and then I was trying to break and it's very hard to balance it out. Like you're yeah. always if you go to a battle and you battle a person who is all in, they're going to beat you every time because that's how they're so into it. And they literally live for that. That is very hard to beat them unless you're like extremely talented and you have, you know, great people around you. But you have to like really dedicate your your life to it to get to that next level. And again, going back to the business thing, when you get to that level, there's business people at this level. They're on another level and you just have to know how to navigate in, in that world. So in more than anything, it's not about in business. It's not about getting something. I want to get something from you. It's not about that. It's about let's work together. Let's build. It's about building and creating together. It's about teamwork. If you're not unified, you're what you can do by yourself. It's going to be like, yeah. Yeah. Here, whereas if people come together, the growth might be a little bit small, you know, slower, but you're going to reach yeah. higher and bigger. Yeah. you just And it'll feel more rewarding as well when yeah. you build together. Yeah, as a team. Right? That so, unity. So for me, uh, going through my life as a business person, all my, my uncles are entrepreneurs. They all, and the, but all entrepreneurs in the same field construction like mm. they all have their own construction business so it's good money growing yeah growing up i'm like i'm seeing them making money i'm seeing them start you know uh, their business and then become a little bit successful again at that time success when you have a nice car i'm like man you're doing pretty good yeah but then as you get older you realize that having a nice car doesn't really mean anything because you can just buy it on credit and pay, you know, a bunch of money every month. So it's it's about learning how to manage money, learning how to, like you mentioned, accounting, uh, learning how to start a business and doing it the right way and yeah. not cutting corners. That's one thing that I learned in business that you don't cut corners. If you you might not be, like you said, making as much as you want, but consistency that effort of, of being on point with everything over time, you'll start to accumulate slowly. And then when you look back, everything is done legit. And you have something to be proud of too in many ways because it's very easy to just go and, and do something, but to do it the right way, it's it's a little bit different. And it's important for people, especially with the, with the breaking world, when you talk about hip hop, breaking is going to the Olympics. A lot of people are going to be on commercials a lot of people are going to get big sponsorships they it's need commercialized yeah. so you need you're gonna have to learn a little bit of that which i think will happen because nowadays we have a lot of people in the breaking scene who are the elders like us who are there you know and we understand it a little bit right even though we're not in you know a uh, business you know at this level whatever but we get we understand it enough to know when something is a good good deal for a person. So they have that support. You know, going back to the kids in breaking, they, their parents are also there. So that younger generation is business-wise, uh, 
education and all that, they're going to have all those resources to kind of, you know, tap into whenever they get to that point where they're asked to be on a commercial or to be on, you know, major television show or something like that. I mean, it's just crazy to think about it, right? When we think back like 10 years ago, yeah. we're like talking about Olympics, like a dream. And me and you used to talk about we'll that all the time. We'll just talk about it like it's something... Yeah that was so far away yeah. kind of like yeah. doge going to the moon you know mm -hmm. it was like that but then, time passed mm -hmm. and all this collective effort from mm -hmm. you know parts of the world came together and it's happening it's yeah. it's really happening and yeah. it feels unreal but are you going i hope i am going I mean, you got to get those shots right i Try hope to, so yeah no i i think too it's like when you get people no matter if they're work even if they're not working together let's say but when that amount of people is pushing the the limit higher and higher and higher and higher and higher and it's happening all around the world where they're competing with each other or everyone's going up, it's a matter of time before someone takes notice and says, look at this, look how influential this, this hip hop movement is. I can't believe there's people all around the world who can do it. And the best thing about breaking is that you don't really need any equipment. So anybody can get into it. You got some music, boom, you're good. You know, it's pretty amazing, right? It is the crazy energy. amazing. Yeah, the energy that people put into it. So I'm really excited about breaking, going to the Olympics. Uh, I plan on being there, you know. Um, Take me with you. Let's go. I'm telling <laughs> you. That's go, why I asked you. I'm like, I'm like, let's go, you know. And I think it's going to be, uh, we talk about it for many years now. And I know because, I mean, even back in the days, like, when I started the school, we would already be like, someday, remember, someday, yeah, someday, one day. <laughs> someday, maybe it goes to the Olympics, some, you know, let's, let's do Who this, knows? let's do It'll that. Go <laughs> and then fast forward, now it's going and it's, I have, a, I mean, it's just another level. So soon enough, and I was talking with Bourne about this to see his take, you mm -hmm. know, uh, and I was talking about the next level, uh, breaking, becoming a sport on TV. Yo, if it's like basketball a, or like if it's you becoming see it. a sport are we gonna sport bet on b-boys is that what's happening <laughs> are b-boys gonna I just had, become i just had this conversation with somebody the other day <laughs> at the halloween event we had uh-huh i'm not kidding so i go to a boxing fight that uh lasts like two weeks ago right um and i'm sitting there watching and i'm seeing the production value and i'm like this stadium must have cost like 50 grand to rent security cameras live stream let's say another 50 grand hundred thousand there's about a thousand people here right now um plus all the professional boxers have to get paid how do they get paid how, who how do where they make money and then um the person i was talking to said it's gambling they make a lot of money everybody's is betting on on a fighter so could that happen to breaking I wonder. You have no control over it. If it's on TV, it's professional. And, you know, with all this, these apps where you can you can bet, you if it's on there. What if it becomes like in the movies, like those, um, <laughs> like somebody what? pay off a, a oh, champion B-boy. To, to yo. lose. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That'd be crazy. <laughs> that'd be so crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. But that should be a movie. But that's that's the <laughs> right. That's the next. That's the next level. So because you never know. You never where know where this is going. Right. You never it's know. It's still going. Yeah. It's, it's it hasn't peaked yet. It hasn't. They say hip hop is still going. Oh, still it's going. a baby. They don't know. It's a baby still. It's still growing. It's, it's still already building. taking over the world. Yeah. The, taking over fashion. Taking right. over music. Yeah. It's all over. It's, it's all over. Everywhere. So the Olympics, uh, boxing. Because I, you know, I box. I'm a part timer. Okay, so I was saying I'm not gonna go try to go and fight a professional. I know gonna, a lot of b boys are into boxing. Yeah, it's good for you. It's it's a good workout, right? But they have you know their own national body, and then they go. They can go to the Olympic Games to to fight, whatever. Maybe get a medal. But then at some point in time, they go pro. Now you're gonna have b girls and b boys do the same path, and then eventually go pro. So going pro is going to mean earning money from battling and doing commercial work, even though this already exists. But now there's a path. So a kid can go through that path 
and then become a pro. Whereas now you become a pro because maybe you're just like winning all the battles or you're just people know who you are. You have a lot of followers on Instagram or something. But that way you'll a kid can actually say, I want to go pro. And then the parent can say, OK, go here, 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 here. And then eventually you're going to get there. There's a blueprint to how to get to. Uh, it's pretty amazing. It right? is. Um, I was talking about this with Born when he was here for your jam. Okay. Um, so if we can do, if there can be an association or some kind of entity where they can provide insurance or mm -hmm. all these supportive things for dancers, that would be great. Um, with where they can report stuff. Yeah. Where they can go get help about yeah. stuff it could be a nonprofit organized mm -hmm. by somebody but unified yeah. right unified mm -hmm. where it's like dancers have a union kind of thing you we're know we're not to gonna that. be we're not gonna be mistreated you're not gonna mm -hmm. be okay if you mistreat us because we have this whole yeah union behind us kind mm -hmm. of thing yeah. like we're it's, talking about that well, like we, that would be great if they could it um, started so it's all about timing right um how many professional breakers are there are there enough to have a union or to have a organization to, that supports in that way uh maybe 10 years ago maybe not right or people were just like i don't need to do that but fast forward maybe three years from now you're going to have to have that to have a, a business workshops how to speak on camera yeah, you know, how, how to, to pose better in front of a, yeah, a photographer yeah, or something. Yeah, because some yeah. people don't know what to do. Yeah, so exactly. So all these things, like having a support, that's our, I feel like that's happening, that, that's next, you know. Um, I, I think that's like stuff our generation have to do. Yeah, to and it's, I mean. support the right. young generation coming happening. up. It's happening. It, you know, again, it, it comes down to like, at least for me, I'm not, I, I, I've already done what i'm enough and I, now i'm now I'm, now I'm, now what i'm doing is like i want to share like stories with people right like i feel like um it's like a new a new i don't know something new you know as an artist you always want to feel inspired right if you're taking photos and, and you know or just anything if you're doing something and you get to a point where you plateau or where it doesn't bring you that level of satisfaction that it once used to, then you go and do something different. The, the key is, is that you know that you have to keep finding new things to sort of like, in many ways, like jump from one thing to another so you can keep moving forward. So I look at it like that. I look at it like a wall and I'm climbing a wall and I was holding on to the, a piece of breaking and it was lifting me up. But then you know what? I got to here. Now I want to go over there. I have to reach with the other hand and go to the next level. So I'm constantly looking for different things. What we're doing right now, this is a different level. There's so much in this world that you, I mean, not, life is short yeah. and we only yeah. have a limited amount of time on mm -hmm. earth. Why not use the time to do something meaningful that you're going to leave behind? Yeah. I mean, not everyone has to take that path, but you know, if right. you're inspired to yeah. do it. It's there. Do it. It's yeah. amazing. It might be tough, but what you get at the end, it's going to be rewarding. worth it. Yeah. So how does it how does it feel for you going your story, right? And then here you are 2021. Um you are living it, you are doing it, you're you know, you're living out your dream. And how does it feel for you to be here now after everything you've gone through? Uh, what is uh, like the feeling you get of being able to to sit down and look in the mirror and say, you know, all those lessons that I learned from my mentors, like, you know, you were mentioning your mentors uh, and I'm still going. I'm here now. How do, how do you feel when you look in and you say, I'm doing this and this is this is who I am? And people know you as such Monica photographer. I mean, so many people have doubted me on my way up. I mean, even TIP, they were like, when do you get these photos? And I didn't share all the photos with them. I'll show them, but only share certain ones. And I'll tell them, hey, you know, my type of photography needs to age. They're not going to shine right now. Like They're not going to shine right now. But years down the road, mm -hmm. I will be publishing all these photos and I will be sharing. It'll take time. But it's gonna. I, it took longer than I 
mm-hmm. anticipated. But, I like that. I, I never thought but, of it like that. But I wasn't in a hurry. I was. I wanted to do it right. Yeah. It's not about doing it fast. It's about doing it right. And mm-hmm. it took longer than I expected, but it's been worth it. And I'm really excited to go through all of them because I started mm-hmm. archiving recently. You saw the list. It's a yeah, lot. It's um, some of them I haven't even seen. But when I have this time of like going yeah. through these images, it's like going back in time. So I tell them it's like That's a time awesome. machine, right? All the photos that you took when you were little, you remember that time because of taking that photo. Like the memories mm-hmm. instilled in, in you, your mind, right? Yeah. So in a way, I was like, okay, this is a project for myself as a photographer that I want to leave behind mm-hmm. that documents this culture. But at the same time, even if that doesn't go too well like as, as a photographer, I want to be... You know, be talking to Magnum agency down the road. Not right now. I still have a long way to go. But like yeah. in my fifties, I want to contact Magnum and maybe become one yeah. a member there. You know, that's my goal, right? So it's a long path. I still have a lot to do before that. But so even if it doesn't go well as as a photographer, if, even if I don't get recognition as a photographer in the from the photography well, uh, world. Um, I knew all these photos will be uh, like a beautiful journal for all the dancers I've met along the path. Along the way. I'm so grateful for everyone that I've met that let me photograph them, let me into their life, personal lives. You know, I've shot Nemesis at his home in his room. I've shot B-boys at their home with their parents or yeah. I've seen the inside of their lives. And I'm very thankful for it. And my way of giving back is through photographs. Yeah. So when this book is out, no matter what, what happens, it'll be a success for me. Right, because you, you, you did that. And so when do you think you're, you're planning to do this? So I'm thinking, hopefully, it'll be out by 2024. Oh, that'd be perfect. I'm thinking because I did all the archiving, right? Yeah. So if I can finish one year per month, Mm-hmm. then you know 14 years right yeah. it's year and it's 14 months but well, it's gonna be work. hard because there's hire like, somebody you, maybe you could hire somebody to help who's you who's gonna fund it yeah you're right my 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 company moving yeah. forward productions um has been sponsoring yeah. many projects that's ongoing so that's all out of yeah kind of my pocket <laughs> well, but yeah you, i mean you have to do that sometimes right and if you but believe it's work in and pleasure together too yeah so there's a lot of yeah. value that i get back by putting my yeah. time and effort into it i mean it's so, it's like you, it keeps you you're gonna keep going you're gonna keep doing it no matter what so oh for sure if you don't have money or you do have money to do it you're still going to do it i mean it's gonna it's just gonna take more time yeah but yeah well i'm excited to see the photos that you haven't shown I'm because so I get some photos and, and I'm, I'm sure you have a lot, a lot of photos that nobody has ever seen before. And uh, I just I'm excited to see that because it's like stories, untold stories. And I really like how you put it, that your photos need to age like wine needs to age. It's like documentary photos. Yeah, that's got to age because if you're looking at a photograph of today's fashion like if you look at it today yeah oh, okay if it's out there it's if it looks refreshing mm-hmm. then you might do something but 10 20 years, years 20 years down the road you look at it that feeling is going to be different yeah i mean even the b-boys and b-girls that did some high fashion yeah. They stand out. They they you Yo, can from tell. the back in the days. The photo. Fo- yeah. I, I mean, photos from like two thousand seven, eight, yeah. nine. The even style those photos. And everything. This, some some yeah. people stay ageless. Mm-hmm. They just the still have the same style. Yeah. They don't age. They have the same look. Yeah. People that do like to do like crazy hair yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. They change. Um, it's pretty fun to look at now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're not doing. I could do a whole book on just like NG photos, like how um, what's that Chinese uh, actor, not Bruce Lee, uh, uh, what's his Jackie Chan? Jackie Chan. You know how on his movies, like at the end, he has all these NG cuts. Yeah. Put together, 
Um, I could do that. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, I yeah, have right. so okay. many funny, funny mm -hmm. photos that I've never shared, but I just look at it by yeah. myself and I left off. But I, I feel like that could be at the end of the book. And that would be pretty cool. Some I could see, fun... like, see, I could see um, a book. I could see a series, a TV, like a movie or TV series where you sh the stories of the photos come to video and maybe they're re uh, not what's that word i'm looking for they're created based on what you say so as you're talking about a photo i could see the story being told maybe you hire some actors and they act out the story but that's pretty awesome uh so for my book i've always wanted to get everyone involved and i'm gonna ask a lot of the um, dancers or DJs, graffiti writers, whoever that's in my photo, yeah. to give me a piece of their writing, or it could be mm -hmm. a sentence. It could be anything that they want to put into the yeah. book to go down in history of yeah. their thoughts. So we're making this together. Yeah, that's it's awesome. It's never like one man so you're, doing you're it. So basically when the time comes, you're going to reconnect with a lot of people. I mean, that I mean, list is long. A lot of long. them have by now become my friends and mm -hmm. You know, I think friends are the family you choose for yourself, right? For so sure. Yeah. Even without breaking, they're, they've become my friends and yeah. I'm going to... Keep... Yeah, you're going to connect and you're going to know them for the rest of your that's life. That's not going away. <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's awesome. And, you know, like, uh, for me, just thinking about the people I've met in my in my life. I won't even say career because I, I don't really look at it as a career. I look at it as a lifestyle. Uh, and everything that I do is a lifestyle. Everything. For Even sure. what I'm doing now, business or no business, so is I'm just living my That's life. That's what right? I tell my non-hip-hop friends. My my work and my life, it, it's all intertwined. Yeah. And I enjoy what I do. And I have fun when I'm working. And mm -hmm. yeah, and it's, so it's a bit different than corporate life. It is. It is, definitely. And, and uh, for me, uh, all the people I've met, or have been because of breaking like the greatest people i've ever met had had something to do with breaking or hip-hop uh something whether it's a lawyer whether it's an accountant they build with me because of breaking because i have something that maybe they're a part of or their kids or whatever that's how i've been able to connect with everybody all the jobs i connect with you because of breaking i didn't know who you were you didn't know who i was yeah but breaking you know brought us and, and connects people together so I look at dance uh, for me as, as a person, something I found when I was a kid, but as an adult too, it has allowed me to, in many ways, find like a purpose. Like I know what I know what I need to do. Like I need to keep doing events for the kids. I need to keep on, you know, putting out educational programs, but it really gave me a, a, a lifestyle like that I feel really blessed for because it's hard to find something that, that you want to do and, and have that passion for it right a lot of people are looking for that also it gives you a very strong work ethic in my opinion um b-boys or b-girls uh even when they pursue other areas of career um i've seen b-boys turn into photographers you know you see kian you see frankie they're doing amazing work you know i've met them when they were just dancing they were in high school maybe five crew dynasty supreme mm -hmm. beings but now they're professional photographers doing, you know, amazing making a stuff. difference yeah. in the world. They do amazing work. And when I do um, hire mm -hmm. teams for uh, my production company, yeah. my foremost first choices are teams that are that have hip hop background. connection to okay. yeah, background, but that are doing that are working in the mainstream I that see. are you know it yeah. doesn't have it's not in hip hop right because yeah. mainstream work is a little different mm -hmm. corporate is a little different you have to know that know their language right yeah. so i can't just bring in yeah, my anyway. homeboys because i would love to yeah. but it doesn't work like that they have to kind of yeah. hone their skills in that area so i can bring them in but there's so many people from hip hop background that are doing amazing amazing creative work out there mm -hmm. um i worked on a branding project for so my company moving forward productions worked on a 10-month uh, branding project and i had uh production teams locally but also i had a team in uh toronto and i had a team in seoul 
And sole production team was um, by B-Boy Spring. He's mm. now, uh, he runs a studio in Gangnam. So, I mean, he's, I think mm -hmm. he's made it, but he's doing all the K-pop music videos. Just as a director, he's just producing yeah. phenomenal contents, right? Not just, mm -hmm. not in hip hop, just, but yeah, hip hop this, music or K-pop, all that. Commercially, he's doing a great world. job. We commissioned them to do a um, couple of ads, like commercials, and it was under 10 degrees, but shoot was already set. Mm. The staff went out and they went to multiple locations, but they pulled it off, made beautiful, beautiful wow. ads. My clients, they were so, so happy. happy yeah. I mean, made me happy, made yeah. them happy. We're all happy. Um, the team in Toronto, Jerry Colante, shout out to Jerry Colante. I forget his b-boy name, but he's an amazing, amazing photographer. He shoots video. It's three uh, b-boy brothers. The oldest, uh, Mark, is a motion graphics and graphic designer. He mm -hmm. also does amazing work. And then Jerry, who's the middle kid, also b-boy. He's mm -hmm. just won uh, second place at BC1 Canada. Okay. So Gotta he's good at b boy as yeah, well. He's good. But yeah. I, mean, I was so surprised because I knew of his um, ph photography through Instagram. Mm. I've never met him in person, but I was aware of it and I was always wanted to work with him. So when I had this project last year, I just reached out to him. I DM'd him. I was like, hey, you yeah. know, I love your work. Yeah. I would love to hire you. And then he worked with me for a few months, several months, and he produced amazing photographs, amazing videos, very artistic, mm -hmm. but also very commercial. He's got a very good um, balance. Mm. That's good. So I see him like making it, making yeah. it. So I'm like, okay, let me, don't forget me when, after you get famous, yeah. right? I don't know what your mom did <laughs> to have all three of you, but. Oh, and they're all like. They're all scene. B boys and they're all creative. Oh, the the youngest one, Jason, he, he models for mm. Jarek. So, oh, you know, wow. when they just come up with an idea, you know, they'll just shoot 1 a.m. Because they cool. have all the talent within yeah. the team. That's the, that's good, you know, like having brothers that all are into similar. Yeah. So if things. you guys need any photos or videos yeah. or like motion graphic or graphic stuff, reach yeah. out to those teams, um, dancers or hip hop yeah. people, and they'll they're gonna just produce awesome work mm -hmm. that's very compatible in the real world. Yeah. Or even stand out even. Right. Right. So it it basically having that background allows you to in many ways create art that translates into a larger audience that would understand it also the the work ethic i think that they um gets instilled that got instilled in them transfers to other areas of work right so they do amazing amazing yeah. work they don't give up they keep pushing yeah. for it you know they mm -hmm. push themselves out of their comfort zones it's, it's very inspiring to just even yeah. witness right that's so cool Pretty. that you can connect with people and and keep them around right i feel like when you find people like that you keep them around because you can grow with them and they give you ideas they, and many times like i get inspired by people who i've met through breaking who are in many ways not doing the same thing that i'm doing necessarily but we have a lot of like a common uh, things that we're good at so they inspire you because you they show you a different way you like you're so set in your ways when you see something different you're like oh wait a second like me, let me try this let me try that so constant sharing of information with each other and, and especially in this world you're sh sharing visuals they they can inspire you know you to maybe say hey let me try that or you can inspire them as well so what's next for monica chang i mean i know you got this this book you're gonna be putting together um i know that you're still you're still shooting like weddings and doing all that, right? I haven't really shot weddings or uh, gigs. Pandemic, it had a lot to do with it, or no? Nah, so oh. actually, my company has been doing well since COVID. Oh, right. you so, were me that. so now we like to work on projects. Yeah. Uh, we do gigs still, yeah. but long term longer term projects mm -hmm. so that's the, we like yeah yeah you mean like something that takes more than one day 
Yes. Where you're working longer. Yes. Where yeah. That's why I'm uh, getting the PMP certification so I can mm. go towards more of that field yeah. where you need planning. You need planning before you execute. Right. Planning takes the longest time. Yeah. And then execution, once it's all planned well, is very easy and it's enjoyable. Mm. But if it's not planned well, and you have to freestyle, it's oh not going to work. It takes so it adds much more stress. Time. Time it's so too. much stress, and yeah. it, you end up damaging relationships. Yeah. There's a lot of. Yeah. That's, I know what you mean. So you didn't get what you wanted to get, then you got to go back, or you got to. Yeah, it's just harder yeah. to uh, organize something after it's all been like. Yeah. Spread out everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. But if you plan it right and then you kind of start off with organized sections yeah. and you know when, what needs to happen, mm -hmm. then it's, it's, it's easier. In, it's, yeah. yeah, it's I got enjoyable. I got a little taste of that when we were shooting a, like a, 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 a commercial piece and I got to see what goes on behind the scenes. Like you could definitely tell that they didn't just come and freestyle. Oh, like correct. they knew exactly what angles, what shots, what way I should be looking, when I should be walking in, like the lighting, all that stuff is like, boom, set up and then let's go. And it's very planned because you know, it costs a lot of money to put all that uh, equipment together. Production. And you got to rent things. You got to have a person who There's specializes. There's 20 people on yeah, staff. Just for one little shot, you have like 20 people setting it up for all that money few hours. On it. And in my and when I was watching, I'm like, it, it gave me a, again, I saw a different side, and in many ways, it, it showed me that you can't cut corners in that world because it's gonna show in your work. So anything you put out, you really you got to do it all the way. If not, people will see it. You have to be hundred percent and more. Yeah. yeah, and to produce. So to talk about that movie set, I was. Yeah working on last week mm -hmm. with Raphael. Yeah, so Raphael Xavier. Um, I don't know if he remembers, but I told him, like, you're my mentor because I love the work he does when I read up about him, when I, you know, looked into the type of um, project that he's done. He's doing everything I want to do. Oh, wow. And he's teaching at Princeton. That's not what I want to do, but a lot of the projects that he's doing, I, f I feel like it should be no more. Mm. It, I don't think he's known as much as he's, he should be known for all the work that he does. Yeah. Um, so he's very inspiring. And I found out that he was shooting a movie, Swerve the Movie. I saw it. I saw a post on Instagram and I reached out to him because I did have the short amount of time and mm -hmm. um, some hours that I could spend. Yeah. And I reached out to him like, hey, do you have stills? For your movie and like why are you available i'm like yes i am and please have me if you don't have anyone yet and he booked me i went up there uh stayed there for about a week worked with the whole staff that he put together and that experience i'm still trying to marinate i mean i'm trying to process it was so much that it's happened a in a yeah. week and it was such good times. It was long hours, but I think I was a. I haven't done that many long hours mm. recently. I I usually direct or even if I shoot, it's very like planned or organized yeah. type of shoots nowadays. So I don't do f like all day, yeah. every day type of. So shoots. to be there for a week and long but hours. Long hours. I was able to do it. I was hurting, but. Yeah. It was so enjoyable and I was learning so much, mm -hmm. like the same stuff that you're talking about, all the stuff coming together, the production of like setting up the camera, yeah. getting the um, the routes all yeah, it's, organized it's, and yeah. everything is 100% um, It's a different level. put together, right? It's yeah. not freestyling. Mm -hmm. It's a different level. I mean, that's how they make movies. That's how they make music videos. That's, like it's another level. So you can learn from that mm -hmm. too, right? I'm into journalism, you know, I'm into documentary. So I I think I'm pretty um, experienced in how yeah. to, you know, go about that area. But as far as like setting up everything perfectly and getting things ready and planning all mm -hmm. that to see it in person was such a... Yeah. 
it's such it's, a fruitful experience. Awesome. I picked up so much. Yeah. It's awesome for me. I, I just, it was amazing. Like that it was raining that day. Um, I mean, there was no sun. It was just raining hard and it's cloudy. Obviously there's, you know, it's dark outside, but I was sitting in a chair and they basically made a fake like sunlight. Oh yeah. So Lighting. I felt, so I felt like I was uh, like a daytime and, and then they had all this stuff. And anyways, it, it's, it was so nice to see the effort. You're in a different gear. So you have to be, you yeah. have to be able to yeah. be in different gears. Yeah. You can't be all of that at a jam, right? right? And you have to be able to, yeah. you know, make your ways around the jam, mm -hmm. but at a production, a yeah. big, full production you have to be on point you have to be on time mm -hmm. you have to have everything done yeah. professionally like that's a given that's just a very basic standard yeah standard i got tired because um when i thought it was gonna take like four hours but it took like 14 or 10 <laughs> 20, 12 hours or something i never like heard that. of so, four hour issues so by the, yeah by the, like uh the eighth hour i'm like thinking so much so this is about to wrap up and no and then like i thought they were tired and they were like still taking their time i'm like aren't you guys tired you know they're professionals you know they go in and do their work and then move on they, they don't want to have to come back if they don't do it right right there and then yeah. and if they have to do another production it's gonna cost the cost the budget it's, like it's gonna make everyone yeah. yeah life so miserable yeah. for a few days you know what yeah. i mean so yeah but it's you cool. have to do your role right mm -hmm. and tired, everyone though. has yeah. less issues to deal right, with right. Right? so it's, so that's how it is and, and again you know um seeing that is awesome um seeing you at events and like a lot of times i will you don't you don't know this because you're doing your thing but um you know i see and and i see you like you're into what you're doing and I'm like, man, I love seeing people in their element when they're like totally focused, professional, and like just you're like in your zone. You're in your zone. It's the greatest thing to see. And I get that way with my stuff sometimes, not all the time, but when it's something, a professional thing, you sort of learn over time that you see other people who are super professional about it. So you, in a way, become that way. Real, it, rec real recognize there real. There you go. Real recognize real. Exactly. Exactly. So. <laughs> Listen, I know we talked about a lot of different things, right? Um, and a big part of us doing these segments is to, in many ways, show and share with people, especially the younger generation that is out there, that if they pursue their dreams, I know, and I say it all the time, it sounds like, oh, everybody says pursue your dream, right? But it can come true. And you're a perfect example of that. I mean, dreams do come true and i totally believe it because now i'm friends with physics and hong ten you know i invited physics to my event you know in new york in 2016 yeah. it's it was an exhibition right all my events were uh exhibition battles it was b-boy born b-boy physics versus b-boy why not and yeah. easy mike from rock City. i remember that you didn't come though i didn't go i you invited did you, invite you. Me? of course really you said you might come but you didn't. You a lot of see. the VA people didn't yeah. come. But shout out to Goofball and B-Boy Toys for, for coming. coming and battling. They represent Thank all you of so us so much. Here. Yes, yes. Yeah. DMV is great. And <laughs> I love yeah. DMV. And the third event that I'll have will be in D.C. Okay. So I'll definitely be on that one. For sure. I think yeah. you'll be staffing. <laughs> oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know. I'm, I'm excited. You know, like. I want to see more events. I want to see more like arts events. I feel like uh, there's a lot of battles, but it's not a lot of like mixed arts. All right? my events are all about peace, love, unity, having fun. Yeah. And I don't do stages. I haven't done stages mm -hmm. because I want people to mingle and yeah. Socialize get to talk to people afterwards and mm -hmm. learn from them, share what you know with yeah. each other. And there's a lot of interactive stuff going on. There's mm -hmm. a photo exhibition. Um, when I had it in Korea, we had a barbecue going in the yeah. patio. We had performances. It was just all around, like three, four things mm -hmm. happening at once. Yeah, let me know about that. That so, sounds kind of cool. It's like the other day we did the Halloween thing. It was outside and that you could have had a barbecue. That was super fun. Yeah, they did a great job. You know, I really didn't have much to do with that event. I just kind of went. But uh, 
the team it's nice to see the team doing it you know and the kids like the kids organize the event well i won't even call them kids they're older now you know but uh um, they're organizing the events and then um you know born came down and it's just i love seeing it I, the, one of the greatest I things know. i love to see is like young kids doing something that gives them like uh, an outlet and then just for me to see them representing and breaking it's just amazing i can't believe it Yeah. yeah, so last Thursday, I got back from Philly, like four in the morning, maybe three in the morning, I got home. That day, that afternoon, I had to be at an important function that was scheduled from months back. So I had mm -hmm. to be there all like, yeah, ready to go makeup and all that stuff that I haven't done in mm. like months, but I had to be there. And then on Friday, I had poppers from New York, pop son, shout out to pop son and Locker saying, um, yeah. so they were supposed to come down. So they came down on Friday and I found out that Bourne was coming yeah. to your event. So I'm like, hey, you know, if we're not doing anything on Saturday, let's come just through. go to the jam and yeah. watch the finals. And then yeah. we like showed up yeah, at four. It was four. cool to see you guys. I didn't uh, know you were going to show up. Just showed up randomly. We were doing some stuff and then... Uh, We showed up at four, yeah. and the poppers from New York loved. Right on time, too. Loved. I think now I'm an expert at what time to be at a jam yeah. to catch yeah, the most. Yeah, you want to get the top eight. I would say top eight is when it gets real, real interesting because at prelims, top 16, you you know, you kind of, everybody, top 16, mixed. I mean, I know I've eight. been to many jams enough to yeah. know that sometimes, like, final, like, yeah, rounds early. can happen in the yeah. first. You yeah. know, if it's like Rivers and Jinjo mm -hmm. on the first round, it's going to yeah. be like finals. You know yeah. what I mean? So I know that. But at the same time, when I'm trying to just have fun, I'm not trying to shoot. I'm just yeah, trying to just go. Yeah, you're just taking it easy. You're doing your own thing. Yeah, I'm mm. trying to just chill, have fun, mm -hmm. listen to good music and watch. That's little... what I've been doing, too. I've been going to events and, and I usually people, when I go to an event, I either I'm with the student and we you know i'm i'm like coaching or i'm organizing or something but it's nice to just go and like not be involved in anything yeah just, i just want to i don't even i just want to watch and sometimes you, you know? pick up more doing yeah. that like yeah. oh you get great ideas you get you inspired get to talk to about more, yep. right? like yep. I, like i went to uh an event here and and i haven't seen people in so long like literally you see them on online right so you don't realize how long it's been since you've seen them in person. So in Korea, they call it hip-hop stay. So after a battle, you just Everybody kind of stays. make little circles and people just talking, catching up cool. with people, and yeah. that just goes on for like forever. For hours, yeah. Forever. If somebody doesn't stop it, you just, it'll just, just go forever. So uh, somebody has yeah. to call it, hey, yo, let's go eat. It's or, you know, let's, let's go eat. Yeah, so do like something. Otherwise, people will be just talking. Yeah, right? That's pretty cool, though, you know, and, and I think that needs to be uh, We gotta needs get you to out be there. there. Man. Yeah, I'm down. I'm literally like, uh, like, I feel so blessed to, I, I don't even know how to say it. I don't even know how to, I can't even explain it. But just know that every single day, I feel so blessed, blessed and grateful more than anything. Yeah. And I can look back on everything now and be like, wow, you know, like, I don't know how to say it, but just know this. I think this. I know. I think I know. When I see my students that I started teaching when they were five years old. Pretty and, boy, I, Fuzzy. and I see them now, you know, 16 years old. Taller um, than the coaches. Taller than me, you know, and they're just to see that and to know that I had something to do with it. It's the greatest feeling in the world. I just just to see them growing up and becoming like, you know, amazing young men who are just going to do amazing stuff with their life and breaking is a part of it. I mean, it's it's amazing. You but start kind of understanding why, you know, when we're growing up, we used to hear education. Education is the key. Education is the way. Mm -hmm. We heard that. Yeah. We knew it. But now I really, really yeah. feel it and mm -hmm. I believe it yeah. that education You kind of look is... back, you look back on your teachers and you're like, what, which teacher was like what I am to them, to me, like my ah. master, my master. So I did Taekwondo, you know, and I actually know how to count in Korean a little bit. And I yeah. remember I was like, my master was 
um, a Korean, like, fifth degree black belt, like, serious Taekwondo guy. He learned, like, for real. And he was a professional fighter. And I remember seeing him with cuts and all that stuff. And he always used to, like, he was really tough on me, first of all. And he always used to tell me, always finish what you start. It's so important that people who are educators realize that, that what you say, they will remember when they grow up the same way that I Maybe you know, not right there and then, yeah, but, but some, one someday, day it'll click yeah, with it's them. It's going to come back. But yeah, Master Kim, he's, I still keep in touch with him. And, you know, I, I talked to him uh, not too long ago because I was telling him about how I followed in his footsteps because he's a, a Taekwondo teacher. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have created the LACE program for the lab. That's you so know, genius. Have, yeah, and I'm like, but he inspired me. And I was telling him this and I was talking to him about everything that's happened in my life. And he's just like, he can't believe it because, I mean, those are trophies right there. You know, Korea, they always do b-boy uh, yeah. breakers, like b-boy, b-girl breakers with taekwondo shows. Always. I've seen it thousand, yeah. I mean, not thousand times, but yeah. I've taekwondo. seen it so many times. I've seen so many shows. Maybe you can do um, your kids and then yeah, his maybe. kids and do something. Yeah. Uh, you can just well, we'll check see. out yeah. some, uh, there's so much footage on yeah. YouTube with I have like to check the it Korean out. b-boys. But I, but I, I mean, just having somebody like that right yeah it's so it's... important so when you say education you're talking about education it's a lot of times when i when what i remember from education is and my mom and, and my family telling me to learn how to read and write and learn maybe history and you know what they teach in school mm -hmm. but education goes beyond the classroom education goes into the arts education goes into taekwondo education Learning is forever it's forever right it's not when you finish school you're fin done school is just basic stuff yeah. that's when you have fun and you mm -hmm. can have you can experiment and mm -hmm. failures are fine yeah in real life it gets tougher yeah as you grow up you you learn and i mean you, like you said it's forever right you're just always learning all the time i mean i don't life know if you keeps feel that changing. way but if photographers don't stay mm -hmm. up to date with yeah. The programs, the equipment, mm -hmm. the current trends. You have to know everything. You have to know everything. <laughs> you right. have to be current yeah. with current affairs and yeah. you have to know politics. Know what's going on. You have to know yeah. policies. Yeah. You have to know a wide range of topics. Mm -hmm. Well, wide range of topics. Yeah. Yeah. But this has been awesome, right? Talking yeah, with man. you. Like we, we talk all the time, but in, our, in what, five, 10 minutes? You know, there's your recording. I'm on the microphone. Hey, how's it going? But it's rare that you get a chance to sit down with somebody. And, and I was really, in many ways, always interested about like what, you know, what you do and like how, how the process is for you. And maybe some of the people that inspired you. Because when you know somebody as a, a b-boy, you know somebody as a photographer, you know them as that. But there's more to a person Right, because we, obviously before you were a photographer, you were just a, a kid growing up. So thank you for coming on. I appreciate you. Know, Thanks you for the on. opportunity, man. So you know, I've been since day one. I mean, I've been very shy with all the public stuff. Yeah. When I get asked for interviews and things like that, I'm always kind of shying away from it. Yeah. Only to realize I need to get over it. Yeah. It's this well, was totally awesome. out of my comfort zone, but I was t telling myself I definitely need to uh, get myself. Yeah. Well, it was great, and honestly, like um, sharing, you know, just your insight is awesome. Because when now that I, I've interviewed a few people and I've talked to a few people, and there's a lot of like commonalities. We have we're a lot alike in many ways, and this goes to show you just in general as human beings on this earth that we're all so much alike. Of course, and there should be no discrimination. Right. Um, not, no, no gender discrimination, no racial discrimination, no stat, you know, yeah. status ranking. Right, right. All that BS. Yeah, we're, um, all, we're all human beings just living. We're all different, and difference should be embraced. Yeah, right. Just because we're different doesn't mean... Mm -hmm someone's wrong yeah there could be multiple right answers right so yeah. don't
be so quick to judge. Kind of look beyond yeah. the surface and you'll Get see a lot people. more. Get to know people and just build with people. I mean, you're that's how, at least from my experience, building with people, talking with people, learning about somebody else's ideas and, and where they come from. You just find a lot of yourself there too, oh, right? Sure. And in yes. like you know, sharing uh, just we all sh we're all just living. Right? Yeah, just we're just peace, here to uh, peace and love. That's yep, it. Yeah, you know? it's all about spreading love. Yeah. So uh, again, shout you know, out to into the deep. Into, into the, the deep. deep. Uh, I didn't get to talk about into the deep, but okay. well, we'll, um, we'll. I'm sure we'll do this again. I'm sure. Yeah, give like, me uh, yeah. now that I did one. Yeah. It's we'll do it again. Good to share. So. Uh, Awesome. again man no, you did a great job and